Hello Bat, it's Thursday the 19th of February. I was going to tell you how to do the punishment today, but I actually f was going to I was going to take out the camera yesterday when I went to London, but I forgot. <laughs> uh, in all fairness, London is really a place to record from because everyone's watching you and all, and I don't really like that thing, and people watch me record, so Friday's vlog is going to be a normal vlog recorded from there and me talking and give you a demonstration of how to do the um, sock puppet punishment which I'm still getting over how bad it was. I'm not forced to watch EastEnders but I watch it anyway just simply because it's on and um, they're got, having this big killer thing today, It's I think it's the 25th or 30th anniversary of it and someone's killed someone like ages ago and they're now revealing them tonight so I don't care for it, I just like to see how in the live episodes they screw up. Like, that's the only reason I like EastEnders, because like, everyone has bad acting, and it's one of those things you don't like to admit you like, but you like it because it's bad. So, I'm going to review the last two Harper movies. Um, Death Heroes Part 1 and 2, very simple names. Now part one is a lot less action packed than part two. Part one also has more emphasis on character than part two. Part two has more emphasis on action and blowing stuff up than part one. So part one, it basically um, starts off with um, Harry, uh, Harry's adopted parents leaving their house because to keep them from harm. It is to get to uh, Ron's house to be safe. Uh, that's kind of inconvenient because he's his best friend's house and they know he lives there because they attacked it a film ago and it's fully repaired. Mm, not a very safe place to hide someone, is it? Entertaining chase scene with broomsticks and motorbikes. That's pretty cool. I like that scene. The thing is in Death House Part 1, the action scenes are much more prominent than um, Hard Blood Prince, which I, I like that. But then obviously you find that they can't go back to Hogwarts. I don't really know why, but it's good that they can't go back because they didn't learn anything, they wouldn't have learned anything, and it's actually much more entertaining when they're not Hogwarts because I love to see the places they go and I love the atmospheric shots. They don't really get the English countryside, but they get the English forest down. So that I like the fact they get the nail the landscape. Characters I feel are... I think Emma Watson's our strongest in this movie. I think she was good in um, Prisoner of Azkaban, but this movie she's our strongest. She needs to carry Harry and Ron for half of the movie, like through it, and you could definitely tell the toy she's going through, but obviously you can still sell she is good at magic. But Hermione is by far my favourite character in Death House Part 1. Rupert Grint gives a good performance as well, and. Um, Daniel Radcliffe doesn't give too bad a performance, but he does screw up on a couple of lines, mm -hmm. like his tenders. No, and I digress, he's actually way better than he is in a couple of the movies. And the dialogue scenes are also very good, despite the fact they're a bit overplayed, because Ron leaves for no reason, like their party, and he goes on search of his own, and then he ends up back with them. And the way the reason he splits up, I'm kind of unclear on, but eh, it's semi-realistic, but I don't think it would happen, because they need his help, and I don't get why he doesn't think that. Also, I won't dare give away the ending to this movie, and who dies at the end. Like, I've said that with every other movie, because in the last three movies, one of the main characters dies at the end. Um... I won't dare to say who died at the end of this one. You will hate me if you haven't seen the movie for me saying who died at the end. Uh, so, uh, the action scenes are much more prominent. The dialogue's better than Hard Blood Prince. Any complaints? A lot of the side characters don't get much focus at all. Neville gets about one line in the whole movie. Louise's barely get anything. There's barely action when they need one but the three main characters. Um, and uh, it's, it's three main characters journey and that's good but the other characters aren't really focused upon. 
It will change in the second movie, but for now, I'm going to give Decker House Part 1 a pretty decent 7 out of 10. Now, moving on into Part 2. Basically, they need to destroy all the Horcruxes in this one, and then fight Voldemort at Hogwarts. I've already said, a lot more of the side characters get focused upon in this movie, and I also love it how Neville and Mrs. Sweezy both get to kick ass at the end. Like, I love it in movies, movie series, when a side villain gets killed off. I don't know why, I just love it at the end of every movie series, when the side villains get killed off. It's happening in Legend of Dark 3, by the way, the Cyphon's getting killed off. I'm going to love to edit that part. And yeah, Mrs. Weasley and um, Neville do that. I'm not giving any spoilers because I'm not saying any names. Actually, in this movie is where it hits home. It's very well done, very well shot. Um, and uh, the spells look pretty good as well. There's a few comedic lines here and there. Uh, the only thing I don't like is the fact that there's no time to sit back. I think probably the only time in the movie where you can sit back is at the very beginning and just after they got out of Gringotts. Those are the only two times you can sit down and catch your breath in this movie. And at the end of a movie you're meant to be able to sit back and breathe but this movie, the ending, is awful. I'm not giving away any spoilers here because this is the actual ending. But it's spoiler free because there's not really anything revealed in it. All celebrating the, the death of the Dark Wizard, I mean, is that really the twist there? And straight after they go to 19 years later when they show Harry, Ron, um, you know, Harry and Ginny and their kids and Ron and Mike and their kids going to uh, Hogwarts. <laughs> and that's it, really. That scene is the end of the movie. The reason why I don't, one of the reasons why I don't like Return of the King is the fact that its ending goes on forever and ever. But I don't like this movie because its ending is one scene. It's a little bit of dialogue. Like, but then again, John Williams does come back to score the last scene, which I suppose makes up for it a little bit. Perfect ending to movie. It needs to be not too long, uh, but not too short, and it's to wrap up all character stories. It wrapped up three character stories, and they're the main ones, but you've got to see how to the other characters. Neville, Mrs. Weasley, the Ministry of Magic, the other side villains who didn't die. They didn't get a single mention after the end. A hint that Neville and Luna might have married, but that's it. We only get a hint. But then again, in Return of the King, they go forever in explaining everything. But the action scenes are well done, the um, side characters get focused upon more. Um, I do kind of like the story to this one. It, obviously the story to these movies does kick in right away and it keeps on going until the very end. They're finding Horcruxes out of Deathly Hallows, which is pretty good. Um, and it keeps on going for the entire movie. And the Battle of Hogwarts is good. So I will actually give this movie the joint highest rating, an 8 out of 10. Not because of the ending or that, but because the action scenes are so good, it's, it goes up. If the action scenes were as good as they were in, say, um, Prisoner of Azkaban, I'd only give this movie a 7 out of 10. So Matt, I'll see you tomorrow where I'll explain how to do your punishment. Um, stay tuned for EastEnders in about uh, half an hour. No, just kidding. It's a, it's actually probably been and gone by the time I've uploaded this. And I'll see you tomorrow, where half term is continuing.